Hi buddies, Jose Wire Ninjas. We build systems and circuits of integrity. We're also Dream Media's preferred partner in New Jersey. Today, we're in Woodbury, New York, or Woodbury, Long Island. We're gonna talk about some window shades. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a little bit particular what I wanna show you, but I feel like it's important because it's uh, a situation you may or may not run into. So, let's take a look what we have here. So over here we have three windows, right? These three windows are getting shades, motorized blinds, motorized shades, whatever you want to call them. They're made by many different manufacturers, Screen Innovations, Lutron makes them. Um, we're doing Hunter Douglas here at this home. Uh, for motorized shades, we need wire in place. We need to be driving these shades with usually at least two conductors, if not more. We're running 14.4 to these locations. The shades only require a two conductor wire, but we figured, hey, let's, let's at least run four conductors if we ever need to upgrade in the future. We have this availability to us, you know? Now, shades, like I said, they're very particular. You need to know what kind of shade you're using and you need to know where the wire is gonna come out. And then uh, what I recommend doing is marking exactly where your shades need to go. So if you wanna get the cam up here, you can see the blue tape. This is exactly where I need my wire. So with that being said, you should be establishing a rack location and pulling all your wires from said rack location, ideally in the same location where your data or networking rack or your other racks are located. It's good to have everything centralized. Now, for these particular windows, these windows are, um, I don't know what to call them. I'm not a window guy, I'm a shade guy, but I'm not an expert on windows. Now, I can, as you can see, there's these little strings there's some type of cartridge and reeling system that assists you and aids you in pulling up the window. Now, I proposed to the homeowner, I said, listen, dude, we might break these little mechanisms when we try to shoot for your shades. He don't care, he wants his motorized shades. He'd rather have that than the window assist. So that's why I'm making this video to show you guys that even though there may be accoutrements here to assist the window, like there's a cartridge and a little wheel pulley system, something's up there. I don't know what it is exactly, but even with this in place, we can still get our wires going. The end result though, is this. You see this string hanging? We broke the mechanism inside there. I don't know if you could see it on camera, it's really thin. I'll put it in my hand so it makes it opaque behind, you know? So you see that? The left side's fine because we didn't drill through the left side, but the right side got owned. <laughs> so, uh, we went over this with the homeowner. He uh, asked us to go ahead, proceed shoot through and get them in place, get the wires in place. So that's what we did. And what I'm gonna to do today is show you how to shoot through because it's, it's kind of odd. I mean, we have, I think three or four layers of metal to get through. There's an initial shield, there's an initial like plastic or metal plate, and then another metal plate, and then another plastic or metal behind that. And then I think where the cartridge or the reel sit, there's another metal square cartridge running through there. You know, so we're getting through three or four layers of metal. And then we have uh, usually stack studs above the windows. There's a double stack of stud too at the header. And it's probably because we're in like an octagon. So um, anyways, so this one's done. This is the end result. This is what we want to achieve. Now I'm going to show you guys how to drill through in this situation. Steve, I think you should be located there. It's probably gonna be the best angle you can capture. <sighs> so this one's ready to go. We have our wire in place. Now there is two parts to this. There's one, it's pulling the wire here from the basement all the way up through the two floors to the uh, through the attic and down here. But that stuff, separate video, another day. We can show you how to pull wires. I think we've done a little bit of that. We will cover more of it. But let's go over what we need to do this. We obviously need a drill and then we're gonna need some bits. Uh, we're gonna need one long bit to traverse the entire the entire way. That's why I'm using this long bit because it'll make it through everything all the way. However, this is a wood auger. We don't want to be using this to drill through metal or stone. So, and then we have a couple more bits here that are gonna come into play. So, these are them. We're gonna use several uh, metal bits as well as some uni bits or step drill bits to achieve this. And I'll talk you through the process as we go. So, what I'm gonna start with is a pilot bit like a little bit smaller metal. You can start a little bit smaller than this if you want, but this one's pretty fresh, so she should do some good cutting. Uh, another thing to note, and what I wanted to lay on to you guys, is try not to damage the windows while you're doing this. So 
what you want to do is make sure you're not in the path like this this spins the chuck spins so you don't want the chuck spinning and hitting anything while you're doing this so we're going to position the drill in a way that the chuck won't spin or hit anything and we're going to try to get a straight shot up there this is exactly where we want the, sh the uh let me just tighten this guy this is exactly where we want it so this is where we're going to shoot the drill is clear it has a clear path of travel now with metal you need pressure you need pressure behind the drill to chew through that metal so i'm going to apply a lot of pressure here and get a pilot bit going or a pilot hole going Start slow, establish yourself like a little bit of a groove through the plastic, and then we're gonna start working that metal. Oh, and safety glasses. <laughs> I forgot my glasses because we're shooting a video. Let me go get some safety glasses. All right, so whenever you're drilling or cutting, you should be wearing safety glasses. It's not fun getting wood in your eyes or spackle dust, but especially metal shavings can be very troublesome for your eyes. So we're gonna try to avoid that. I don't know if you can see that, but see that little metal shaving? That's gonna be so terrible in your eye. It's not worth it, buddies. Just wear your glasses. So we just went through one layer of the metal. You can see the little metal crispies on there. Now we're gonna try to shoot through the remaining metal layer. There's a little gap and then another layer of metal. Jeez, sorry, I got metal on me. I don't know if you noticed, but again, pressure is your friend. When you're chewing through metal, you need to apply pressure through the drill. Uh, it would help to have my little extra little arm for the drill, but I don't really need it. I think I'm starting to hit the wood. You can tell what you're drilling through by the feeling, the, literally the proprioception of it, but also you'll see wood shavings or metal shavings, so you know you're in the wood. Now, I need a certain size hole. I need a half inch hole here at least. The next step is gonna be using my uni bits to achieve a, a nice wide hole. So when I do pull my wire through, it's not just cut into the jacket just doesn't get cut up. We need a little bit bigger hole than the wire itself. It's gonna help when we're trying to pull the wire through too. Um, I'm thinking we can hit this next size up on the pilot hole and we'll, we'll, do the, we'll do the uni bit last before we shoot the big bit in there. Yeah, the wood's starting to come out. That's good. We're already in the wood layer. So now I'm going to finish with this guy. This is a half inch. We're going to step up finally to a half inch. It's a big jump to a half inch, so it's going to take some, some manliness here. Cool. Yeah, you see this metal guy? We're gonna get rid of her with the uni bit. So now that we have the the actual diameter that we want, which is a half inch, we're gonna uni bit the uh, we're gonna uni bit the metal out a little bit bigger than a half inch. So let's get our chuck ready. I'm gonna start with this guy to make the the inside the outer hole wide, and then I'm gonna go on the inside with this guy because she's a little bit, you know, the flute's less or harder of an angle. I don't know how to describe myself. Well, we're basically gonna ream because you see this guy, you see this metal? I don't know if you can see that little flange. We wanna get rid of stuff like that. So that's what the uni bits can do for us. See, it's gone already, bam, immediately. Cool. All right, we can remove our tape. Hole's looking pretty clean. The initial metal hole's a little bit bigger. But we don't want the outer hole very big. So now we're gonna go with the thinner uni bit and get that up there. And then finally we'll finish with the auger. Beautiful. Definitely made it a little bit bigger, but what was that? Oh, yeah, we broke this drill very early after we bought her. The truck doesn't hold very well. Notorious for destroying tools and equipment. All right, make sure tighten her by hand. Now we're gonna finish with the auger. We have to get through the wood double stack here and a double stack up here of wood. It's at least four studs we're going through. 
And with augers, you gotta be careful. These things are so strong, like, like especially when you're going through multiple studs. I mean, they, the strength on this thing to pull you, dangerous. I think we're gonna speed up the drill to level two. And then we gotta go back to one for more power and torque. Oh, I probably look like an idiot while I'm doing that, right? <laughs> make like a, make a real good face for you guys. <laughs> okay, so now that we're all the way through, we're gonna back her out, let some of these wood chips out, and then we're gonna add some more slack to the bit and shoot it again. Yeah, cool. So now we're gonna get a little bit less bite on here, but we're gonna be able to get all the way through. Whew. Okay. Should be all the way through. Can't feel her, but. Whew. Holy crap, there's an extra stack of wood on this particular shade. We're about <laughs> a quarter inch short. <laughs> so we're gonna have to chop that out, but. Um, Hey, yeah, let's see. Ooh, I can feel the hole. I can feel the hole. We're good. I can feel it up here. This part got through. We're gonna have to shave it down a little bit more. <sighs> Question is, how much bit can we go without? All right, we're gonna go right at the end. We might break this auger, but this auger is pretty damn old, to be honest. I wouldn't. It wouldn't be the worst thing. She didn't make it all, oh, I feel the head. All right, buddies, sorry, had to pause right there, Steve. I'm gonna take the camera, get a nice close-up on my beautiful face. Now, um, check it out. So, we drilled through with the auger, right? We're gonna leave this drill in place for instructionals. Let me get a flashlight for you guys so we can get some light up here. Let me get some light. Because I want you guys to see, that's our auger bit. So we drilled the entire way. We started with the metal, we got through all the wood. That's our auger bit. Now we're ready to pull this wire through. So we're gonna show you guys how that plays out. Take that, turn off my flashlight. Put this down, nice and safely. Oh yeah, okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is shoot a snake up. Hopefully get through. We got a snake up, she's through. I'm gonna really hard bend it for you guys just so you can see what's going on. There we go. So we have our snake in place, our wire in place. Steve, you got any tape? I don't think I do. I was not ready to pull some wire, here we go. We're gonna get a piece of tape. Tape our wire. And I'm actually gonna do this a little bit special. So I'm gonna tape the end to the end as opposed to taping the wire to the snake. We're gonna tape the end of the rod to the end of the wire. So, we're gonna secure our tape. All right, we're gonna send the snake back through and this should pull the wire through the hole. Okay. Nice and gentle. Look at that, buddies. That's a shade wire right there. Now, like I said, 
Getting the wire to this location, I would consider that less difficult, maybe more time consuming. It depends what window you're dealing with. Typically windows just have wood above them. The window has a wooden frame. And then there's usually, sometimes there's a big fat header. Sometimes these builders, these framers, what they do is they put, they put a piece of like a beam right here and then they stack and then they stack it with you know double or triple stack studs on the side, and then they continue whatever is next. But uh, sometimes you're gonna be, have a beam here or a chunk of a beam. Uh, a lot of times you're gonna have double stacks here, single or double stacks up here. I wish I could show you what's behind this, but I can't. I'm trying to do my best to explain it. But that's how you drill through the window. Uh, this one was more difficult, so I thought it was a cool video to show you guys uh, with the metal involved. Um, let's test the window and see if we broke this string too. That's the other thing, this was kind of experimental, so I thought it'd be a cool video to show you guys. We broke the string. <laughs> we broke the string, most definitely. So if you have these string windows and you want shades, you're gonna have to make some type of compromise. And the way the homeowner and me thought about it was like, dude, are we ever gonna open these windows? He's like, dude, I'm never gonna open the windows. I'd rather have the shades. So, that's how you do it. Um, I think that about covers everything I wanna show you guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.